Hey guys, welcome back to the bench. Before I get into what I have for you today, I wanted to send two thank yous to two folks that have really helped us out recently. Of late, we have run into a rash of camera issues and it was just killing us. We were previously filming on a Canon 60D and unfortunately it just died one day. So we called our friends over at Peachtree Camera Repair and unfortunately, because it was a firmware issue, there was nothing they could do about it. They referred us to their friends over at Robert's Camera, used Photo Pro. Now Robert's Camera has sent us over this gorgeous, amazing Canon 5D Mark II that I am filming this on now. So I wanted to send a massive, amazing, from the bottom of my heart, thank you to both Robert's Camera and our friends over at Peachtree Camera. If you guys need anything at all, call them. They're the best. Now, today what I have for you is this. On the last video that we posted about all of the new tools that we are adding to the work area, Jesse commented and he asked that we explain how it is that we had added this motor to the rolling mill and exactly you know, what we had done. So that's what we're doing today. This is one of two rolling mills that we have. This one is a Tatum T70 Spanish made rolling mill. The motor that we chose is a Bodine Electric NSH54RL brushed DC gear motor. The reason that we chose that is because all by itself it is low speed, high torque, which when combined with the fact that it has a 10 to one gear reduction box on its output means that it is perfect for this. This has to rotate 10 times in order for that output shaft to move one full rotation. What that means is that it is incredibly high torque without being so fast that it'll shoot pieces out the back. It's important to have enough torque to move the rolling mill no matter what, because rolling mills do not have to roll quickly, they just have to roll smoothly. You have to have something that can reliably move those gears and rollers so that anything I put in this side comes out the other side, guaranteed. Manual rolling mills typically have some kind of lever arm, like this one, to operate them. And in order to replace this with this, I had to design a coupler, that guy. Now, John and I can cast precious metals like nobody's business, but I'm a lot less comfortable in steel. So after I designed the coupler in Rhino, I sent it off to Shapeways for manufacturing. They sent it back to me in black stainless steel, and it is awesome. And two nice features of this particular motor are that it is direction reversible and speed variable. So I'm working on getting it into an enclosure that I like because I don't know where it's going to end up on or maybe in the pedestal. But once I do, that will control how fast this motor spins and I'll be able to add a switch that will control whether it feeds this way or feeds that way which is very useful for when you're rolling back and forth to stop stock from bending and curling on you. Lastly, I added a foot pedal down here. Now that lets me safely and conveniently operate the rolling mill without fear of it being left on or of something like my fingers getting sucked through it unintentionally. It's amazing because before I had to hand crank everything, but now in order to start and stop the rolling mill, all I have to do is that. I mentioned in our previous video that a good rolling mill is one of the most useful and versatile tools in any jeweler's shop. It lets us do things like turn a bar of gold into a flat sheet or round or square wire and even straighten out chains and necklaces if you're clever. I also mentioned that I needed it for a super secret project. Now, I still can't tell you anything about that project, but I will offer you a consolation prize. Somewhere in this video, probably up here or up here, one or the other, uh, I will add a link to our next video where I turn this into this using the rolling mill. I will also leave a link down in the description to our blog post with a more in-depth write-up and pictures and things, schematics, all of that, uh, that you can use to build your own, 
I'll even include the downloadable models so that you can customize them and make them to your needs. If you guys have any questions about any of our other tools, or if you just want to see some more hot rolling mill action, let us know down in the comments. We always hope you'll hit that like button and you should definitely hit that subscribe button. So when we finally do post that super secret project, you'll get a notification. Until the next time we see you, it is always a pleasure having you here with us at the bench.